Hey guys, it's Dennis here. Today we're going to be working on Assignment 11-1 on the GIS Tutorial Workbook for version 10.1. Um, I was having a lot of mic troubles before, where it would mute for about a minute or so. So, hopefully all those issues have been solved. And I think we'll be able to make it through this without any problems. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do the Get Setup, like we do for all maps here in the tutorials. So we're going to go to our Edge Repress folder go into the GIST folder, go to My Assignments, and then Chapter 11, and Assignment 11. Now, you can save it wherever you want to, but this is just how I'm going to do it, and the first thing I'm going to do is make a file geodatabase. I'm going to call mine 11-1. Next thing I'm going to do is going to go into the, my, the map document properties, and we're going to store relative path names to data sources, and then we're going to change the default GDB to the one we just created. So we're going to go into GIST1 folder, My Assignments, or wherever you save it, of course, and we're just going to add that. So everything looks fine. And then we're going to save as, to save this as 11-1. This is the MXD file. And there we go. Now we're going to add the data. Now for this, it asks us to add the municipalities in first so we're going to go to Ezra Press, the GIST1 folder, data, and it's going to be here. Now you can add the parks with it as well, it's not a big deal since I already tested this. But the reason why they ask you to put the municipality uh, in first is because they want to make sure the coordinate system you get is the state plane Pennsylvania itself. Now if you didn't already know, the first layer or feature class or what have you that you put into the table of contents that's the coordinate system and projection they're going to use and every time after you add something else it's going to try to project to that projection so we see here that this is correct so we can move on and we have a few more things to add the next thing we're going to add is in the spatial analysis folder and it's going to be the land use layer now we see here we have a red exclamation mark and that means it needs you to set the data source. Pretty much is asking you, where is the data for this item? So, we know that it's in the land use folder, and right here. And this is the TIFF file. Okay, we have that now. And we have two more things to add. And that's in the Spatial Analysis GDB. It's going to be Pittsburgh in the Digital Elevation Model, the NED. Okay. Alright, we now have all our data, we can get the work. First thing we're going to do is we're going to turn off everything but municipalities, or the Munich, because that's what the book tells us to. And the first thing we're going to do is going to do select by location, and we're going to pick select features from, so municipalities, and the layer that we're going to intersect is Pittsburgh. <coughs> now it asks us to apply a search distance. So it says to do 1.25 miles and we're going to hit OK. Alright, as you can see here we have 54 things selected. The next step is it wants to deselect two things. So we're going to go over here in the select features, we're going to hold shift, and we're going to click here. As you can see, number of features selected, 53. The reason why we're selecting here is because this is Pittsburgh, right? And also wants to deselect this. So you can see here, 52 items. Whoops. Now, if you're slightly confused why it looks like it's still filled in, it's because everything that borders Pittsburgh is selected, so it just gives the illusion that Pittsburgh is still selected. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go here, and we're going to export this. And as you can see, export and selected features, OK. GDB 11-1, that's where we're working in. Now, if you weren't working in there, you can just do this go to default because we select that as our default GDB. And this is to be called suburb. Okay, so we hit save. Alright. Do we want to add this to the map? Of course we do. Now we can turn off Munich. And just in case you want to make sure, there it is. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to do the select by location again. This time we're selecting from parks. So just in case you're not sure exactly what this is doing, so this is selecting features from this layer, right? So we're trying to select here, and I'm actually going to turn on the parks so you can see. 
So we're going to go to Select Location, Parks, Source Layer is now Suburbs. We're not using a search distance. We'll apply first. So you can see here, all the parks inside the suburbs have been selected. Some go outside. That's fine. Okay. Then we're going to go to Parks. Same thing that we did before. Data. Export data. Export selected features. That looks correct. And we're going to call this Sub Bin Parks. Save. Sure. Of course. Okay, now we can turn off parks. Now the last thing we have to do is set up our environments. So we're going to go to Geoprocessing, Environments, Raster Analysis, and we're going to do S specified below. We know the cell size is going to be 50 because that's what it tells us. The mass is going to be suburbs. Okay, that's set. And then we're going to use a tool that's called Extract. Okay, let's double check that. We're not changing this, so everything looks okay. Let's exit this out. Okay, we have our hillshade now. Now, the first thing it wants us to do is to go here and change the symbology. So we're going to go to Properties, Symbology. We're going to Import. We're going to import the land use. Okay. And if we put this up here, you can see this is now the Lanius. Now it wants to go to Suburban Parks, which we're going to put up here. And it wants to do a hollow and a thin line, which I think that's thin enough. And it now wants us to properties, changes to the labels. So it wants us to do a scale range for our labels. And don't show labels blah, don't show labels when zoomed. And it says to one to one hundred thousand. And it wants us to use a smaller font size, let's say six, and it wants us to give it a halo. So we go to symbol, edit symbology, mask, and we turn on halo. Okay, so you, we haven't turned this on yet. So we'll label features, and you can't see anything. That's because we're zoomed out further than the allotted. We have to change one more thing. We have to change the label field. And in the beginning, it tells us to change it to the script. So let's apply, and there we go. Now, as you can see, we're right now at 1 to 100,000. If we zoom out, it won't appear anymore. Zoom in, there it is. 
Okay. Now the next step is to symbolize suburbs. So it wants hollow, and then a thick border. So I'm going to assume this is thick enough. Okay. And we're going to let's do 0 0.4 for this. And we are going to change the labels for this because it also wants a halo. And we'll do that there. Lots of small sizes too. We'll say seven. Now I'm going to change it to red real quick, just as an example. You can change it to whatever you, you want. But the reason why I'm changing it to red is um, just to show you that when we zoom in, you can differentiate between the suburban parks and the suburbs. So you can decide how you want to do this any way you want to. So that's fine. Now the next step is to change the symbology of the hillshade. So we go to properties, symbology. We're going to change it to classified, I believe. Yeah. And then we're going to classify it as standard deviation. And it asks us for one third standard deviation. So you can see here, these are increments of one third, class is 19. Okay. So we don't see a direct change with it yet, but we will. We're going to put that below that. Oops. And we're going to Next, we're going to go to land use suburbs. We're going to change the symbology of this. And it wants to add a transparency. So I'm going to say 40. You can mess around and see what you like. So you can see here now, when you turn off the hillshade, mm, it looks all right, but when you turn on the hillshade, it really gives you the kind of idea of what you're looking at here. And that is all the, the actual work done. Um, if you need to work on here, I always recommend to use landscape because it's easier for these kind of maps. Of course, it's your choice or whatever your professor is asking of you. Um, I think that's it. Um, if you have any interest in any other tutorials or assignments, let me know. Of course, like and subscribe if you want to see more when I post them. Hopefully, the mic trouble is solved. I can't actually tell till this video is over. <laughs> Um, yeah, that's it. Thank you, and uh, hope you had a happy Thanksgiving.